Hello and welcome to uh, section three. This section is very important because that's where we get to, to do the real work. Um, as you can see from the title here, we have templates for the win. So templates. Um, here I'm going to teach you how to create templates so you can save time when you're applying for jobs. As you may already know that when applying for jobs, you don't want to have uh, one version of a resume and then one version of a cover letter that you send out to every job out there. That's mistake number one. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of people are doing. But for your own benefit, that's a good thing because that makes you stand out when you do a little bit more work, a little bit more preparation, when you're a little bit more prepared to actually send in these um, applications. So, um, We'll talk about how to prepare a proper application that stands out and get people's attention, you know, the employer's attention, the people who are hiring, the decision makers. So any um, good, you know, application form or application, you know, a job application requires two main elements. Some might actually need more if you're applying for a specific kind of job like a graphic designer or a web developer, but any other position requires only these two things, a resume, or someone they call CV in uh, uh, parts of Europe, or and a cover letter. All right, so we'll start with the with the resume. The resume is um, a standard piece with all the information, or the most important information about you, your work experience, your education, and stuff like that. So, uh, how do you build out a template? You know that you can easily kind of uh, edit here and there. Uh, one of the first places I would actually ask you to go is Canva. If you've never heard of Canva.com, Canva is like a, a designer's kind of tool uh, that they use to create logos or banners and all social media posts and stuff like that. It's, it's actually free. Most of it is free. You can pay, but even if you don't pay, you still get access to a lot of tools. So Canva.com has actually, if we go to Google and type in Canva resumes, all right, so there's two tools that are related to Canva. We have this professional resume templates. And as you can see here, we have these really beautiful, well-designed um, resumes, such as this one. You know, you have a place for a picture and enough room for all the information that you need to, to, um, to submit. Um, let's look at a few more examples here. And I have a few examples here for... Uh, in the presentation so as you can see so you put in you know your, your picture and other in some countries you don't really have to put your picture but since this is for remote jobs and you might not actually have the chance to meet with these people in real life I suggest you put a, uh, a professional photo uh, with a smile um, that studies have shown and this is a, a fact is that when you have a smile on your face and have uh, professional clothing you're uh, perceived as more friendly and even more professional. So, like, take 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 this note: smile in your photo. Uh, you know, be dressed well. Only, you know, because you're only going to take the this part up from from the from the image, and that's going to make a big difference. It's better than any random picture from social media, um, one that's where you're not really dressed professionally. So it makes a, a big difference. Just this is very basic, I know, but a, a really well uh, thought out picture is actually very important. Um, I like in this example that the name is uh, put in a much bigger font. Um, your uh, yeah, profession or what you what you do. Um, contact information is here. Um, and then you do like education in one side, references. It, this is really not necessary, but if you're if the people you're applying for, well, the job you're applying for requires you to have a preference, uh, a references and stuff like that. You can actually put them here, but you don't really have to. Um, this is also something that's not really necessary, but you can you can add it here um, about me. But I guess uh, it makes it a little bit unique. And the more unique you can make your application stand, like look, the better your chances are of getting called in for an interview. And believe me, I've had my 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 fair share of uh, hiring and even being like. Uh, going through the interview process for a lot of jobs and i know so i know exactly the more unique you can be the better your chances are of getting called in for an interview so we have a 
this about me section, you can make it as unique and as interesting as possible. We'll talk about more examples of how you can make it interesting. So professional skills, um, what we look here, what we see here is this is for somebody who needs to show all the skills or tech skills that they have, employment history and stuff like that. This is actually pretty interesting. We'll look at another example here. This is more colorful. Um, uh, there's more, uh, there are more colors and I like this, uh, two kind of layouts, uh, here. So you have the executive summary, skills and expertise, contact information, the image, the picture, and uh, the name, work experience. What's missing is the about me, but instead of writing about me, they put in an executive summary. So let, let's go back to Canva. This is the first tool. This is just resume uh, templates that are ready. And uh, Canva, you can just sign up um, for free through Google or, or Facebook. So it's fine. It's easy to. It's very easy to, to sign up on this uh, on this website. And you actually do have access to a lot of these templates. Um, these are more plain ones that you know um, where people didn't really don't really need to put uh, put uh, pictures here. But here's one piece of advice that I need to tell you. You want to apply to a lot of like for a lot of positions, a lot of jobs, right? You don't want to have just one resume being sent out to everybody, especially if the positions are a little bit different. I mean, I would understand if, you, if you've if you been doing graphic design your whole life or you've been doing uh, web development for, for five years and all you're looking at is like web development or graphic design jobs. In that case, you don't have to uh, redesign and redo your uh, um, resume. But we have a lot of cases where people are just starting out. Um, so they're going to be applying for uh, teaching positions. They might be applying for customer support uh, positions. They're going to be looking at a lot, a different kind of set of, of, uh, of positions. So that's why they have to have a, one different, you know, resume for each, uh, type of job. You don't want to put, say, send uh, a resume that's, tailored towards customer support jobs be sent out to a teaching position you want to kind of uh, add in appropriate information so here's what i mean by that if you here's two examples um you have let's say you have uh uh five years of graphic design and you're uh, applying to graphic design work but uh, something showed up uh, that interested you that's not graphic design you don't want to send your graphic design resume with all the graphic design experience to um, to a, a teaching position for instance you might might want to kind of just tailor the information to match the job that you're applying for you don't want somebody who's interested in you teaching french for instance and your uh, resume is filled up with graphic design work and doesn't mention anything about experience teaching French or at least just education related to knowing a little bit of French, that resume is going to be tossed out in the trash immediately because it doesn't match the requirements. So that's what I'm, I'm, I mean by uh, being able to kind of edit out a little bit of, of stuff. Because again, uh, looking at a lot of people, they might jump from job to job to job. And we're talking about different jobs, not in the same you know field. So that's why it's important to actually edit out these things. So prepare the information in a, uh, you know, Google Doc or anything like that before you actually put it in here. Put it in a, a, um, a resume. Uh, the other tool, Canva Resume Builder. So what we have here is Canva Resume Builder. This is actually free, and you can actually sign up to it. Uh, it helps you build out a really, really well-designed resume. So this is a tool that's, again, free, and it's going to make your life a whole lot easier, and it make, it's going to make editing, you know, uh, resumes very, very easy. Um, yeah, oh, that's pretty much all there is to resumes. Now we're going to move on to the next uh, section, which is even more important than resumes because everybody has to have a resume. What makes the difference in a lot of the um, job applications is, and I, I want you to pay attention, is the cover letter. The cover letter is extremely important. And this is, again, same mistake that what everybody else is doing, is that they just look up these job you know, offers and they, uh, they just send out the same cover letter. They write one cover letter and send it to everyone. 
And that's how they'll never get hired if they keep this, doing the same thing. You have to put in a little bit more work, a little bit more preparation in each thing. And we'll talk about how to how to uh, prepare a really, really good cover letter for every job. This actually takes a little bit of work. All right, so as you can see here, this is a Facebook post, and I'll read it to you. So this is actually a friend of mine on Facebook, and he has a, a marketing agency, so he does hire, hire a lot of people on occasion. And he says, is it just me or is every job candidate an enthusiastic, hardworking, and reliable individual who is able to work well under pressure, under their own supervision, or as part of a team? Who is responsible? You know, he's making fun of the idea that people are all just copying and pasting the same thing and sending it to everybody. And the, the comment below actually makes a whole lot more sense. So Mark Walker says, spotting stuff like this makes it so easy to weed out anyone who has taken a scattergun approach to their job applications. Most applicants at the moment just want any job they can get. And that's exactly what I want you to avoid. Just in this Facebook post, there's a huge lesson out there. I want you to pay attention to the idea that you don't want to spend five minutes on, on a job application and just take stuff on an email, attach it to an email, and just send it to the email address that they provide or fill out the whatever form they have. You have to, to spend a little bit more time and a little bit more preparation. And that's why this video is here to help you create in templates that are uh, easier to, uh, you know, customize the, the, the resume and also the cover letter for every job application out there. All right. Now, we'll look into something very practical. A cover letter. I'm going to dissect it really, really well. All right. So as you can see here, this is an example. It says, Dear Ms. Doe, it says, I was excited to see your job listing for the lead gen, uh, digital marketing position at Westward Strategies on dynamitejobs.com. So I wrote in what you're supposed to be doing. So at first, what you do is briefly introduce yourself. Um, here, what the, what the applicant is doing is he's talking about how, where he saw the, uh, the job listing. This is not necessary, but again, uh, it's, it makes a little bit of sense sometimes. But this is a good example. Then again, you go in to talk briefly about your experience and position yourself as an authority. Because again, this person did the homework before actually writing this. They looked at the job, the job listing and saw all the details before actually writing this. So he says, as a dynamic email marketing specialist with over two years of professional experience executing marketing research, analyzing consumer data, and running A-B tests to drive successful marketing campaigns, I'm confident that I would be a valuable asset to the team at Westward. All right, so this guy straight to the point goes in to say, okay, so I have two years of experience in email marketing, and I know you were looking for an email marketing per uh, uh, person. Um, and this is what I've been doing, and I'm good at what I'm doing. And then again, the other part, and this is, uh, uh, I'll show you exactly like how to prepare. You have about three or four blocks of every cover letter. Um, you want to uh, have two pieces already written out that you can customize just slightly, and then there's the, 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 the middle part. The body uh, part of the cover letter is extremely, extremely important. Uh, that's the only one that you have to rewrite from scratch every time. So instead of actually writing a whole cover letter from scratch, you just write the body part. And this is the one. So what, what you do in it is you actually dig into specific specifics from the job listing and, you know, and show how you are a good fit. Uh, so this guy says, says, your job listing mentions a need for someone who's experienced in email segmentation and campaign development. So he took this. He didn't just uh, get it off of top of his head or her head. He got it from the job listing. So you're not really doing any rocket science here. Both of which are, so I'm reading here, both of which are areas I have extensive experience in. Uh, I'm currently employed on Marketed Inc., where I've honed my skills by running numerous successful email marketing campaigns. While employed here, I've spearheaded a digital promotion campaign for the company's new line of sandals, 
that successfully raised our total in online engagement by an impressive 13% over the course of six months, contributing substantially to the, to the department's annual goals. Okay, so what this guy's doing, or this uh, uh, lady is doing, is they're um, talking about how they are a good fit. So they took something from the job listing. They want somebody who's experienced in email segmentation and campaign development. And he says, this is exactly what I was doing, what I'm doing in this job. And that's why this guy actually is actually sounds, looks like a good fit for this position because he has the, the experience that they're looking for. Okay, so I, uh, he saw email segmentation. And he said, okay, I do, I do that and I have worked on that. And these are the, the, the results. He actually solidifies his position as a good fit just by talking about the results that he achieved. And that's not something that you have to do every time, but at least just, okay, so this is what I do. And when you go, in, when you go to every, like a lot more specifics into what the, these people are looking for, you make sure that they pay attention because again, you're talking and technical jargon, technical vocabulary that they're looking for and say, okay, so this guy is obviously uh, knows what he's talking about. So yeah, so that's what the body parts is all about. Oh, the, the next part is it's about them, not you and how you can help them. Again, you put yourself, you kind of lean out of talking about yourself and talking about them and how you might actually fit into the, to the big picture. So I'm confident that my proven track record of excellent work ethic and parallel attention to detail and high-performing email marketing campaigns will make me an immediate asset at Westward Strategies and allow me to contribute to the team's success. All right, so this is also something that you can actually keep, uh, you know, pretty much the same and just change a few things here and there for every position. Um, but at the end, it's usually always standard talk. I look forward to discussing the lead digital marketing position and my qualifications with you in more detail. I'm available to talk at your convenience. I'll be in touch next week to follow up and to make sure you have received my application. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Sincerely, and you put your name at the end. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of an, another example of how you want your cover letter to look so you get you know you say dear xxx i saw or you could say i stumbled upon your uh, job listing on dynamite job or on linkedin or whatever you saw the wherever you saw the the, the listing and i'm very excited to submit my application and my application to my application for, for the position of let's say xxx uh, you talk a little bit about yourself this is the part where you introduce yourself a little bit after three years of experience in the graphic design department over at XXX company, I am looking to branch out and work in a different in a different uh, field in a different industry 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 all right and then again here you go into the specifics so the body part is where you go into the specific in your job listing i noticed a focus on a focus on uh, a creative on on uh, i noticed a focus on creative process and is that you i noticed that you are looking for someone with a creative mindset you know when it comes to graphic design this is just an example i'm not really a graphic designer i'm just showing exactly how you can actually format the cover letter just so you can get people's attention 
in your job listing, I noticed that you are looking for someone with a creative mindset, which is something which is a skill I have been actively developing over the last six years. I worked on five big projects and where we were able to to get result x and x and x something like this. this is just an again it's just an example and another tiny little paragraph after that just solidifying again your position just by saying uh, uh another thing i noticed another Another item I noticed focuses on, let's say, some skills, some traits, and I have uh, a few certifications along with, along with a few awards I have won on a local level within the company. And in a, a few regional award shows. This is, again, and you pretty much just take this and copy and paste it. But again, you have to customize it a little bit. I look forward to discussing the, the XXXX position and my, qualif and my qualifications with you. I'm available to talk. Your convenience, I'll be in touch next week to follow up. Make sure you can actually always change the, the wording on these, and that's pretty much it. You can just keep this as a template and uh, uh, you know, edit out and you know, anything that you feel like is, is interesting. But again, you don't want to just uh, talk about nothing or lie in your you know, application, you have to uh, say what's there, the real things, real experiences. You don't want to just lie uh, because then, again, that's just looking for trouble. So this is just about how you position yourself when you put in a little bit of work in your resume and your cover letter, just like we did. Um, for me, it took me, what, like 20 minutes to go through these? But as soon as you, when you start kind of like uh, working on your, uh, working on your uh, cover letter and your resume, it's going to take you two hours, three hours tops to adjust them and create those templates. But again, for every job, that's going to save you at least an hour, at least two hours. Depends on not like what kind of positions you're going to be, uh, uh, you know, applying for. Again, thank you so much for following us with this video. I know it's been, it's been a little bit long, but it has a lot of, you know, very important information that I want you to um, kind of keep in mind. The next video is going to be very interesting and it has to do with your social media, something that can make or break your application. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.